Hey everyone, how's everyone doing today? So in today's video, I just want to talk about the TurboGrax or the PC Engine CD core that just released today on February 6th. So at the time that this video is released, probably be February 7th. So the information is still good. I would say it's pretty still pretty close. So hopefully maybe by the time you see this, there'll be some more updates on it or at least a retro driven pocket updater might work. But that's for a little bit later on in the video. But first, please leave a like, subscribe, do all that great YouTube stuff. That way I can continue making these videos and let's get into the video. Hey everyone, so now we're back on the computer side. So here you will see everything you need for the Open PC Engine CD. This is pretty cool. Uh, this is the upgraded version for the PC Engine. Now. Just mind you, these files are a little bit bigger than <laughs> than some of the other games, as some of them could be up to 500 megabytes, some anywhere between, I've seen 100 to 500 megabytes. So keep that in mind. I recommend you have a good side storage. I'll probably end up upgrading my SD card again from 128 probably to 512 in the, in the near future, just to kind of future-proof it, considering that these games are pretty big, and if rumors are true about the PS1, maybe that will come on too. But for now, we're talking about PC Engine CD. So, he gives credit, the uh, original, uh, was the port of the original core developed by uh, Gregory Estrella, and heavily modified by SRG320 and Grey Rogue. So, you know, kudos to all of them. Thank you for everybody who's done put all this hard work into making this possible for everyone to use so without that being said the easiest way for installation currently is to use the uh, right here this is going to be the pc updater utilities that is currently the easiest way to do this retro driven uh, gui has not been updated for this so Currently, the updated utility is the easiest way to go as it will also create the uh, JSON generations will be done automatically. It's a little bit more complicated. It's not as straightforward as using the retro driven pocket updater, but it does get the job done. So, you know, that works out pretty well. Now, from here, what I want to show you is pretty much what you need to do. So the pocket updater. Now here are the instructions. I would say the biggest thing you need to do is to select the path. So the path is probably gonna be what most people might get a little confused on. Um, I'll try to keep it as simple as possible. So what I recommend you do is you already have the pocket updater. Once you download it, uh, you have it on, the, on your desktop. Easiest way to go. Just put something like, you know, CMD here. And then there you go, it'll open it up. So from here, I recommend you just copy this part here, just copy it, paste it right here. So this section right here, you're going to have to put the path of this file here. So you could do copy path and then control V to paste it. You know what? Let's just get rid of the whole thing. Let's see. So you need to get rid of this part here. So the easiest way, actually, let's do, let's delete this again. I didn't put it correctly. So put it right here. Move over the dash. Put it right here. Bring all the way back, and then Control V. There you go. That's the part you need. Let's get rid of the quotations. We don't need that right now. And then you're going to need the path to your SD card. So you could do the same thing. Just pick anything from the uh, anything, any copy any of the path over from the SD card. You're going to have to go back to the end and just remove this part here. Okay. Then Control V again, and you can get rid of the quotations and the asset part. There you go. This is pretty much how it should look. And then you will hit enter. And then there is check it for updates. From here, all you gotta do is update all. Make sure you do update all so it creates the JSON files. 
Let it do its thing. That's it. It's done. So if we bring over, let me just, let's see. Let's close all this out. Let's bring this over. So if you bring this over, you should see the assets. Scroll down to where we are. All right, here's a common. Here are the games that I have. And here are the JSON files for the games. I have one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four, five games. One, two, three, four, five, six. So something didn't copy over correctly. So this one has way too much. So last alert did not copy over correctly. This happened with another game. I tried Yu Yu Hakushu, so that's not, I'm not even going to bother trying that. That's just not going to work. So I'm going to delete it if it lets me. Let's see. Permanent delete last alert. Yes, uh, that is an issue. I will deal with that issue later on. So from here, I'm just going to switch over to the analog pocket and we'll just show it there. All right, so welcome back. So we got the analog pocket here. So let's just quit from the cartridge. Now, this will be just like all the other cores. You go to console or however, wherever you set it up. I'll have to change this later on to home console just so it matches everything else. So, go to PC Engine. Uh, this is pretty cool, you know, gives you the basic info, gives you the image right there. Manufacturer NEC Home Electronics 1988. So, yeah, you can check out the about. Tells you kind of the same, you know, the images that were, sorry, the information that was from the GitHub page. The CD-ROM is an add-on attachment for the PC engine that was released in Japan back in 1988. Oh, so that's a little cool little tidbit information there. Interesting. Huh. Cool. So it was a nice little add-on back then. Uh, this is before I was born. But let's go and select Run. So I have a couple of games here already. Uh, let's go over the ones that I saw already had issues. I tried this one here, the uh, YS4 Dawn of Yeast, I believe is how it was pronounced. I might be wrong. Now this gave me an error. It was saying it's too big essentially. So you first select it and then you select the BIOS. And it'll give me an error at the error in framework file ID is too large. So that was the first error I, I encountered. Now. The next error I encountered was for Godzilla. Now this, I believe, had more issues to do with the BIOS itself. But it was kind of asking for version 3, which I thought was already there. So here you go. CD-ROM system version 3. You press start. That sees... <laughs> I'll give you a little note here. The BIOS, something wrong with the BIOS. The big guy, the big man, ain't... Coming back <laughs> yet. Please use version 3.0. See, I, I thought I was using that, but I don't know. So I can't do Godzilla because that would have been kind of cool, but okay. So now we can move on from here and just look at the ones that do work. So let's get a little closer. We got Fighting Street. So. Guessing this is before it was called Street Fighter. So I'll take a wild guess. All right, press start. There you go, Capcom. Let's just do one player for now. Okay. Come here, let's see if you have some core settings. You can hear the controls. Cool. Okay. Got Ryu versus Joe. Did I pause it? Okay, here we go. Oh. Nice. <laughs> I tell you, this this pocket has become retro geeks heaven. This is crazy. You can, I'm still amazed that you can play console games on this, even though these are pretty old games, but. Hey, they're playing pretty well. Oh, well, I just lost. Now, once I get the dock, then I'll actually be able to test it out myself and see how it works. 
Oh, oh, come on. Oh. <laughs> I'm guessing this is supposed to be New York. But judging by the graffiti subway. Actually, it does look like it. You can see the Empire State Building in the back. <laughs> All right. So enough about that one. Well, let's go to another one. Okay. Now, actually, I did have another error. It was with the uh, Sailor Moon one with the English patch. So I'll show you what I mean with the error. Now, it wasn't particularly like it mentioned an error. You would just get stuck at uh, just a moment. So you, I think I left it on here for like a couple of minutes last time, and it was just, just kept staying there. So I think the English translation might have something to do with the error here. One other thing to note which I forgot to mention on the computer side is they highly recommend using EX fat for your SD card, not fat 32. Keep that in mind, not fat 32. You'll run into some errors. So the Japanese version actually of this, I think this is a visual novel runs no problem. So the patch version is the issue, but Japanese version runs pretty good. Now, since this is in Japanese, I will not know anything about it. I mean, be able to read it. So I'm sure when this, this is just a first release, they'll have more releases afterwards, doing some updates, doing some tweaks, so you'll see more and more games being able to be supported. This is pretty cool to see though. I'm sure the English one would be very cool for fans of Sailor Moon. Like I don't know which one I'm what I'm choosing. I'll have to use Google Translate just to be able to identify this. But hey, looks pretty cool. Like I say. It looks pretty cool. Alright. Let's try another one. Since we tried those two. This let's try this one. <laughs> I believe this is Castlevania. Let's try the gameplay out. This is an English translation of it too. Now this translation works. The other one did not. It's interesting. Maybe they changed around the text too much to mess it up. Looks like you can't skip this part. It's still pretty cool though. I believe that's German, but actually it makes it sound pretty cool. Okay, I would like to show the gameplay, but it's really not letting me skip it. Let's see, hopefully we're good here now. We can just continue on. Yep, Castlevania. There we go. Oh, they really make you go through this part, huh? Okay. Maybe just for the first one. Wow, I only have so many different buttons to press. Ah, well that takes me back. Well, all right, I don't think I'm gonna be, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna go through this again. 
Interesting, but they ran. I, I may have to test it out a little bit more. But hey, so far, there's a few games that were able to run pretty good. A couple more I need to work on. I think it's more about trying to find the right game that will work with this. As I mentioned, this is a very early release. So keep that in mind. There will definitely be me, uh, more updates down the line. So, hey, I'm happy with it right now. This is pretty cool just to be able to test out. I'm sure there's a lot of uh, PC Engine CD fans out there. Hopefully your games that you like will work on this. But all right. If anybody else, uh, you know, questions, just leave some comments down below. Uh, leave a like, subscribe, do all that great stuff, and I'll see you in the next video.